cloud so I can access this, that'll be perfect. Oh, I got the note. Um, yeah, I, uh, okay. Roger, Nat, any questions? Um, just to, I guess, I guess somebody from the uh, commissioner or Mike or somebody has to be present at the time, uh, Stu, or no, 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 I don't know of anyone. I mean, we like to chat with somebody, um, that's, you know, it has a, I mean, obviously a property owner would want to be there and share some stuff. Um, you know, we can probably get, we can fill in the blanks on some of the questions that, um, you know, are on the evaluation. Um, More than happy to participate. Thank you. Great. No, Lynn, I don't have any other questions. I, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I, I have if a few you, questions. Um, I, in principle, I think it's a very good idea. Um, I'm concerned that if there are things that have a cost, um, these are not things that we can necessarily can be spending money on. And I, I guess one of my questions, Stu, is the grant money that's there, is that just for private households or would we be able to get some? That, again, we, we, so, and these are, these are thought of as like 30% um, projects. So, so let's say there's a $5,000 project. Um, they could throw $2,000 at it. Um, so if it's the other thing that they have access to is some free labor um, and in this grant. So uh, there's a there's a group called Northwoods that's um, able to volunteer people um, uh, younger than my generation <laughs> um, and and do do you know kind of a youth core group um, and the college age and 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 some of those. Uh, and so I guess they have the capability to have a, a leader that knows what they're doing and, and, and they've done these kind of things. Maintenance on, um, on putting in water berms and uh, water um, shoreline in, uh, enhancements such that to prevent erosion and prevent slowdowns and uh, to prevent speeding up of water um, so, so I don't know whether we could, I don't guarantee that anything's going to be in our hands to give to Hardwick Electric, but I, but I think it's, I think it's quite promising um, if, if it was, it was. Okay, get, get, getting the assessment doesn't obligate. Have... And, and, and there's no obligation, um, you know, you, you just, someone's going to, they're going to report back and give you a few ideas and um, you guys have already done some work on that came out of the dam uh, review, you know, years ago to to improve the erosion on the north end of the, on the south end of the dam, right beside the beach. You guys have already done things, kind of in the dam area, um, and and that's all great. Uh, and you know, and then just if this pops up something that might work, um, and so it might just say, you know. Here's, here's some ideas and whether it's Hardwick Electric or a grant from, or part of the grant from the Orleans County helps pay for it. Um, and it and it's a community-based, um, some community-based visibility um, that I see as a plus. Well, it's a plus and it's potentially a minus if something comes up and we don't do it. And I will say that I am concerned about the confidentiality of the information well, I can attest to that. I, you know, I, I've signed a form saying it's confidential. I'm not going to report back to um, others. I mean, there are a few people that know, and like Christine um, and the, some of the stewards, it came up as a possibility. But I don't have to say we're doing it or not doing it, and what the and what the results are. And Abraham out of Orleans is it, the data does go goes nowhere other than back to you guys. I'm, I'm, if there was something, I mean, if there was some point source issue, I think we'd want to know about it anyway, because it's going to, you know, well, it, it, it depends. What, it depend, I, I agree that we want to know about it, but I'm not sure that we, but I'm quite sure that we want to be able to look into it and look into all of our options and, and Absolutely. not have it be, you know, 
on, on the front page of the Hardwick Gazette or in Front Porch Forum or Facebook or wherever. Um, and I can assure you that that won't come out of our group. Um, the only thing that would ever happen on Front Page Forum or Hardwick Gazette would be if this was successful and you guys wanted to, you know, gleam some um, public recognition after the fact, not be not during, before, or possibilities and all that. So, so the alternative, if we wanted complete discretion, it, it would be to hire someone to do a review. You know, uh, if we were going to do that. Well, we want yeah. we have to have complete discretion. It's right. it's 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 you know that's that's um, all the you know every property owner has that. Is the town doing it? I'm curious because the town I know has property on the lake. Oh. No. no, I'm asking I'm asking Stu if the town of Greensboro is doing it on their property, which happens to be just on the other side of the dam. Whoa. Yeah, Willie's Beach. Um, there, that area is very natural um and so it doesn't show as a it's one of the less disturbed areas of the lake from a from a property our our lake is highly disturbed from its original setting where you know with 225 cottages around the lake much of the lakeshore has been challenged from its natural sort of state but this program's not saying you got to go back to, you know, nature. Uh, it's saying some of the better management practices for shoreline usage is to consider widening your <clears throat> buffer zone from your lawn to your to the lake. Um, so if you have 15 feet, uh, if you could swing, get rid of a little more lawn and having 25 feet, all the better. That the, the riparian zone of the lake or the streams are highly impacted all around the world and all around our state. So what anyone can do to make it more natural, yes, the better, but there's nothing here that's telling somebody they've got to. There's nothing, um, you're not, we all know there's permitting for future work um, that might take some of these things into consideration. But what's been done is done, and we. What I just, from my point of view, uh, Mike's heard me before on this is, is we've impacted the lake. Let's steward the lake um, and and these things. You know, when I deal with the state on lake level, um, <clears throat> I I have a viewpoint of we've we've already changed the management of the lake. We can't return it to its natural state. Um, so. But let us steward. Let us steward that. Uh, is, my, is is my personal viewpoint. But to, to address the, the disclosure issue, does the is there an engagement form or letter that uh, specifies like a, an NDA or uh, I mean, it, or non-disclosure, for example? Um, the the assessment form does not. Um, because if we added a added a you know non disclosure clause, then yeah. The yeah. reason I was confused was because I did look at the I think I looked at the form. Maybe I didn't see. Maybe it was something else. But I thought it was because um, I think it was it, it was a link to it in Christine's email. Okay, she but, might have. I don't know what she said sent you, but there's there are a lot of things up on the Lakewise. Um, yeah, no, there was the, a lot. It was the DEC it, it, website. Yeah. Yeah. No. And 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 some some really good information there. I I went through it and there was a, a an LP evaluations form dot PDF, which I assume was was the form. I didn't download it, but I guess the sense that I had was this was a you know a something that the government was doing. And if I understand you, it's not. It there's a program that the state has to assist like our local community with with this so it is a program lake wise is a program that the state does sponsor from the watershed division um it but yet it's not forceful it's not and i said again not punitive right. if if there is anything comes out of it you don't have to you don't have to do anything to 
fix it. It's, it's not going to get reported um, into its. Um, but it's not a watershed. It's not a, an expert from the state who's doing the evaluation. Correct. It's a, what the, the evaluate the evaluator that we'll use probably would be Abraham out of the Orleans County Water. Um, it's Orleans County Conservation District. He doesn't work for the state, but he he makes his living out of grant money that's provided by the state um, and other agencies. Um, so <clears throat> it's kind of quasi government, I guess. So I'm, I'm looking at the, the form, uh, Lakewise Awards Program. Yeah. So I did to, to Lynn's point, uh, is this, does this end up being a public document? Absolutely no. Okay. Uh, I don't know how it's not a, a public document. That's, well, that's... the document I'm filled out is public, but you're filled, yours filled out. I am. We're I'm not a private. The, the problem, Stu, is we're not a private property owner. We're a public entity. Yeah. And if we enter into something, then it's public, just like this meeting. Um, uh, okay. And unless, unless there are, I mean, for example, when we did H11, okay, there were and if we're negotiating a contract that can be confidential while we're negotiating it, the contract itself is, is a public document. There may be certain provisions in it that are confidential for, for business reasons that we had to agree to that. But that, so that's, that's, that's the concern is, is that. Um, mm, thank you. I, I think it gives me a little broader I understand and, 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 Thank you. and re reasonable people may have reasonable differences about what ought to be done or what the best practice is to 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 take care of runoff in a specific spot or how big the buffer zone, you know, how much of the of the grass should be removed uh, by the beach or how much of the parking should be changed or, you know, I mean, there, there are any number of, of things. Um, so, um, Again, I would love to know what the effects are, but my concern is if it, if it comes out that there's a problem with the septic system on the bathrooms and the end result, and this is completely you know, hypothetical, the end result is that um, it's gonna be very costly to fix it and we're an electric utility. We're not. We're not. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, a a a, a beach company, um, and we're not the town of Greensboro or the town of Hardwick in that sense. Um, the decision might have to be made to close the bathrooms, which I would imagine would be a fairly unpopular thing to do because people use those bathrooms in the summer when they go to the beach. Um, and, and that's, that's, that's the kind of thing. I, I'm not sure that that's a good reason not to do, to do this, um, but that's what I'm just trying to get my head around as to what, you know, how this could play through. Because I, I clearly see the benefits of doing it, but it is not without concerns. Thank you for sharing. So I think we have a, I think we have a decision to make. Uh, I mean, it, it sounds like this doesn't have to be done imminently. Not at uh, all. So I mean, one you know one possibility is that, I mean, if everybody's of a mind, we can take action at this meeting, or we can sleep on it till our meeting next month and take it up then. Lynn, um, what would you think just of an up and down, up or down vote first of, you know, should we do it now as Stu is requesting? Yes, no. If, and then if, if, if people no, want to do, if people want to do that, that's fine. Yeah. And if there's, if it's, if it's a no, then we, I think we owe it to Stu to say, you know, how we're going to, uh, how we're going to proceed ultimately. 
I mean, I guess I guess one one possibility that strikes me again is is to is to do the evaluation, but not to do it as formally as part of the program with an evaluation sheet and um, and and that kind of thing. In other words, that Mike would 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 be there with, with Stu and whoever else, Abraham or whoever it is who's doing it, um, get the feedback, bring it back to us, but we're not sitting there ticking the boxes on an evaluation form. So what, what would you be willing to do an informal evaluation? I mean, is that possible to do an informal evaluation that remains confidential? Uh, you're asking me that? Yeah. 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 That I, way we get the info, but yeah. It wouldn't I, start a chain reaction. Wait, I, I, I would check with Abraham and see if he wants to do it that way. But I, I, I would personally, I'd say, why not? I mean, it's, it's not. But on the other hand, I, I think the fear of confidentiality is, and I, I guess I now understand it if you say that we fill out something and hand it back to you and it's and it, and it has you know some data on it you think that then becomes a public document i didn't see it that way i don't see it it, it really being public i still think that this can be done with you guys um and and you'll get it you'll get an answer well if actually um the person who who joined in the middle of this conversation is is Brooke Dingledean, who's 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 our outside counsel. Um, I don't know if Brooke has had the sound on while this has been going on, but I mean, she can weigh in on the confidentiality issue and whether um, maybe it's a non-issue. And, and again, it's really it's our call. So if people uh, yeah, are comfortable like, then you know then then somebody make a motion and somebody can second it and we'll take a vote and we'll go from there i, I don't uh, like uh, the idea of trying to do it informally i mean that sounds like you're kind of looking for a lawyer who will agree with you but you don't want to find a lawyer who won't i mean i think you you either do it or you don't do it and uh i don't think there's a great risk of some great expense here um those bathrooms aren't ours they're on our land uh, they surely drain to the brook, not to the lake. Um, and if they don't, we'll make sure they do. Um, I hope they don't drain into the brook. <laughs> well, they, I mean, I mean, in that direction. I mean, but anyway, it, it, I, I think it's a responsible thing to do to go ahead and um, you know be like everybody else. I mean, we don't have a septic system there of our own that we own. We don't. We don't have a much much risk um and, and and a property owner doesn't have risks either there we we ask the questions do you know when your septic was last pumped do you know when your uh where you know where where your leach field is but there's no in septic inspector doing anything right. with these lakewise assessments it's purely the property owner telling us what they know of what they know and if they don't whatever so <clears throat> if we're if we're Going to include the aseptics in this evaluation um and in my mind it probably that all could be left out because it's not the area that we're we're i think we're more concerned about um it's runoff. the um so it's runoff that i'm i'm that's yeah that's what i'm i'd like to but it, it, if it's if it's part of an, like an ongoing investigation then at what point would it become public? It wouldn't become public if it's part of an ongoing. Uh... No. The only thing I could see becoming public, personally, is if you guys said, "Let's do, let's do a project," and we actually take something on, and then you want to, then you wanted to share, share it as a, a, a testament versus a, you know. A rectifying a violation. This isn't what, you know, this isn't trying to find violations. This is purely just trying to find ways to improve uh, the lake. Um, and if it, if it would be your choice, if you want to take on, be part of a project, if it'd be your choice, if you wanted to do any of this work, just like any other property owner. Is there a motion? 
I moved to approve. Uh, I moved to go ahead with the with the um, evaluation. I second it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. It's unanimous. I think Mike would have too. Maybe Michael. Well, we can't vote people who aren't here. No, but I mean, okay, so 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 just procedurally, what's the next steps do? Um, I have an opening Wednesday uh, morning or afternoon uh, with Abraham. I've got two others scheduled with two slots available. Um, we were going to do three that day or four. Um, this coming Wednesday is there. The next ones are not scheduled. Um, I would, well, but Abraham and I were going to work on a schedule for two or three dates in July. Um, the watershed study uh, is ramping up, so he's going to be consumed with quite a bit of that from from his Caspian um, bandwidth. So I think I'll get probably two dates in July from him. I can get those and then throw them back to Mike if he's going to be the um, the you need to have Mike or can you have some bozo like me? Yeah. Yeah. I, we'll think, take, I think it should be I think, I think it needs to be Mike. Yeah, I, I do. If you want to go along, yeah. Nat or anybody wants to go along, that's fine. Okay. And it would be Mike, you know, Mike, if you can I let agree. us know when it is. So if someone on the board wants to join you folks, that's that's fine. Okay, but I, I think it. I think it's Mike and Stu should figure out what works for okay. both of them. Yeah. How long you say is you had openings this Wednesday, Stu? I do. Either after okay, I, or... I have two things going, but they're both shuffleable. So let me know what times and I'll email you back. Okay, I'll, I'll email you the two choices and uh, tonight you'll see it tomorrow. Okay, uh, how, perfect. How, how copy, me, copy me, Stu. Okay, I'll copy now. Okay. Perfect. I'd love to have you this quickly. Thank you. How, how long does it uh, generally take to get the assessment? We an hour and a half, and then we're moving on to another property. And then I mean, the, the, the oh, written assessment. To get it back, um, uh, yeah, I think he's got a, like a week or so turnaround or. Oh, OK. Yeah. OK. Thank you, Stu. Thank you. You're welcome to, to stay for the balance of the meeting, although I think we're going to. Well, I just I, I'm, I'm looking out my back window, and I see that we have six cars here. So I've got guests in the house. so. I will margaritas. depart, but thank you very much. Uh, enjoy your tacos. You're welcome. And thank your margaritas. You. All right. Oh, margarita bye. Monday. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to suggest since Brooke is here, and I'm guessing, Brooke, that you're here for the executive session. Um, yes, ma'am. <laughs> that we rearrange uh, the agenda and take up the executive session at this time. Yep. Uh, so I will make a motion that we move into executive session in order to discuss a legal matter with council. Is there a second? second? Any opposition? Hearing none, it is 5.54 p.m. and the recording needs to go off and at six it's, we're out of executive session at 6.52, no action was taken, which then takes us to um, the energy storage project. And I, for one, would like to keep this discussion pretty short. I think there were some quirky things in Sean's analysis, most notably that it was 2.3 megawatts that he was talking about the output of, and it's a 1.6 megawatt plant at H11, but um, I think it's worth talking with DeLorean. I was hoping that we would have already been doing that. Um, and I would like to move that um, Mike get in touch with DeLorean or if that needs to be through VEPSA, but however, whatever the channel is that we do that and we do that as quickly as possible. I second that motion. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Okay, passed unanimously. So, Mike? 
No Keep sweat. It. They'll be on for next month. Okay. I'm sorry, the, what, what will be on for next month? DeLorean. DeLorean. Oh, okay, great. So they'll be here for next, and, and they know we're interested, you know, so that we're yeah. in their queue. Um, the next item is this um, wrap pilot, uh, which is uh, the, I forget what it stands for, but it what it is, is a program that, um, the state is looking to do, which is to provide financing to low income. Mike, and correct me if I'm misunderstanding the program, um, to provide financing for low income households for energy efficiency improvements um, to their homes that would be financed by um, a state agency but the payment, but, but the utilities would act as the collection agency. In other words, the payments would be paid over time through the utility bill. And the question, and there's a pilot project that's starting and the question is whether or not we want to participate. Did I get all of that correct, Mike? You are correct. And, and I will say that I think when I heard about this, and we all got this, the, you know, the email, I thought this is a, you know, this is, it's, it seems like it's almost, there's no, the, we get compensated for our cost of providing this billing service. It helps our customers who participate, it helps the environment. It seems like it's a no brainer to me. Um, Beth had some concerns, Mike, is what you had said to me, but I don't really understand what they are. I'm, I'm digging that up. Hang on a second. Me a lot of emails. Well, I'm not putting my finger on it, but so <laughs> essentially she was saying it was going to take some quite a bit of uh, specialty programming uh, in the UPN system and she was concerned at how much work the administration of it would or wouldn't take. Those were her two big ones. Um, my concerns were the, or one of my biggest concerns was that the bill goes with the meter and renters are, are um, can participate in the program. So if I have a renter in house X and he signs up for a project and has a $5,000 debt with VHFA that we need to collect and he then moves out, the next renter then has to start paying that. I, I thought there was something in there that also involved the landlord. I thought, I didn't think a renter could do this without the landlord's involvement. Yeah, no, they, in the presentation they did at the board with me, they, I asked that. I'm, I'm said, talking oh, about yeah, the documents that I read. Hang, hang on, I, I, I don't have them all. Yeah, open. if I got it wrong, that's possible, but that's what I heard them say. You know, I obviously didn't hear a presentation. I just read, um, I'm, I'm looking through the documents now, oh, come on. Okay. Program goals and challenges. I mean, first of all, VHFA is going to bear the loss of all non payments, so that's not our risk. 
That's correct. Yes, um, they, they still will cover if somebody doesn't pay, it's nothing on our balance sheet. So do you, okay, here, here, here's here on the eligible. I'm in the VHFA letter. Okay. Uh, from May 11th, and it talks about eligible participants. It says for the pilot, single-family residences and apartment buildings with up to four units may participate. Rental properties are also eligible. However, if the tenant pays the utility bill, the tenant must sign a specific form of consent to pay the wrap charge during the tenancy. Also for the pilot, only multi-unit buildings with a master meter in the building owner's name may participate. This is restriction is due to constraints that include the challenges of modeling energy savings for individual units and apartment buildings and the program's positive cash flow. So. Perfect. So it says that the renter has to pay it before they leave, basically. No, during the tenancy, during the tenancy. Right, before they leave. No, they pay the wrap not the charge, power. not the whole amount. That not the whole amount. But the point is, if it's a if it's a multi-unit building, it has to have a master meter in the owner's name to participate in the pilot. So you don't have the problem of a tenant signing up and then not. Um, And, and then and then there's, and then the next tenant doesn't want to pay or stiffing because it's the landlord's going to be the party on it. Okay. Um, and um, on a, and on the consent form, which is this form of consent, um, the case is. Someone can't come in and do stuff to a property without the landlord's consent. So the consent form is saying that the tenant is agreeing to pay the additional costs mm -hmm. that the landlord is having done to the property. So I didn't I just didn't see I just didn't see an issue with this. Okay. Sounds good to me. Um So it, 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 it seemed to me that I just didn't see the, the risk to us. Um, and I, I understand Beth's concern, but I don't know how costly it, it could be. I don't think we're gonna have this. I think there were limitations on the number of, of customers that would be in the pilot anyway. Yeah, they have $10 million that's funding the pilot, and that covers the entire state. Right. And the minimum funding, project funding is $2 million, and the maximum is twenty. dollars uh, not $2 million, $2,000, and the maximum is $20,000. Yeah. Yeah, th there's a, it's, there's a, a, an already existing weatherization, that federally funded weatherization assistant pro program that has, that does exactly this. Uh, and that's probably where the money is coming from. It's it's actually separate separately funded, and I, I don't. Yeah, I, I it doesn't have any effect on whether or not we should do this, but it just is mystifying to me why the state would create a, a, a second program that does exactly the same thing. I I don't I don't know. The only question for us is, do we want to participate in the pilot? Right, right. And it seems to me again. If you look at attachment A to this, the VHFA letter, it says only residential accounts, this is on program participation eligibility, will be included. Single family homes are permitted. Multifamily buildings of four units or less are permitted provided the building has a single meter in the owner's name. Renters may initiate the process, but the building owner must execute the participation agreement. Okay. So that's if someone's renting a single family house or in an apartment, the tenant has to sign a form saying that they will pay during the period of their tenancy. Um, so in, 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 and manufactured right. homes and condos are not included in the pilot. So people living in a trailer can't participate. 
the, and if the tenant defaults, the uh, the owner isn't liable. Even no, though the, the owner the owner will be liable. The owner will be liable. The owner is signing an agreement with VHFA. Okay, so huh. because they've got they've got a more efficient building. That's between them and the tenant. All right. And VHFA. I don't know how that's going to sugar out, if you will, but we're not on the hook. Mm -hmm. That much is is clear to me. Yeah, we're not on the hook. Period. That's absolutely correct. We're, we're simply the billing agent. We're 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 the collection agent. So the it's a two year program until funding is used, whichever occurs first. There's a statewide tariff. We don't have to come up with anything special for it. Well, as long as the fee schedule as set out in each SOW is equal to or more than uh, the cost to Hardwick Electric. I mean, they talk about fees and expenses, you know, the fee determined in accordance with the fee schedule set out in each. As I understand this, we're the ones who are going to say what our cost is. Okay. Yeah, the next step, Lynn, that, there, that we need to take to move forward with being a participant, which we definitely can, and, and, and that's where we're set up to go, is we have to, have to negotiate that fee with the HFA. Okay. So I'll have to have Beth work up some numbers for me and we'll go from there. But it, it, it's, it strikes me, you know, again, thinking about the low income, tar you know, push for, for, for helping our low income customers. This is something that we can do without having our other customers <laughs> subsidize them. And even, even if we miss on the, on the fee a little bit, it's not going to be that big a deal. I definitely think there's a lot of positive to come from this. So, I, I mean, my guess, Mike, I mean, one question for Beth, is this something that can be done as a hand calc? I, I know we'd rather have it in the system, but if we only have a handful of customers, which is what I think my suspicion is what that what it would be, um, well, what I'm thinking is she'd set it up similar to, and I'm, I'm not the SEDC UPN yeah. expert here, she is, but I know that um, we set up the repayment plan with Craftsbury Academy as an automated function in the system that's called a contract. So you can put in a whole, it's a whole separate um, piece of the software that actually tracks that stuff. So that, that piece of it is easy. So what's the difficult part? I can't find her email, but she okay. had a couple, three things in there she was worried about. Okay. I'll forward it along here as soon as I spot it. Well, I think, I think we're a little bit late. So, I mean, I would like, you know, to make a decision tonight. But there's no reason we can't move forward today and pull out in three months if yeah. you have a problem with it. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's move, Lynn. Okay, so we, ha we have a motion, right? Did I make, I made a motion, I think. Did I make a motion? I don't think so. Take it again. Okay, I move that we opt into the pilot wrap program to assist low-income customers with energy efficiency improve, improvements to their homes. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. There's unanimous approval. Um, thank you. So yeah, Mike, if you would notify whoever needs to be notified. Yep. Um, okay. Um, are you still on your hard stop or are we moving forward? I, I can go a little bit, but I can't, I can't go a long time. Um, I didn't expect to be on Caspian Beach quite as long and didn't realize we were <laughs> starting 15 minutes late. Um, 
Yeah, I think we need to do, give, I just need to step away for one second and I will be back. Uh, uh, just a quick question, Mike. Uh, could uh, could you make sure or, or see if you could get documents or some of the presentation or numbers or whatever it is uh, for the DeLorean presentation prior to the meeting? Absolutely. Great. Getting hungry, Nat? I'm getting hungry. Always. always. <laughs> You've been, been munching that. I've been brought a few crackers with lobster spread on them, though. Wow. Oh, yeah. You're so living lobster. lobster there. Lesbian Lake Lobsters? Willie's store. Oh, wow. Lobster spread by a guy from Greensboro Bend. Oh, yeah. The one that does the fish, too, right? Yep. Yeah. Scott, yeah, pear. Thing. It's definitely uh, it's definitely seasonal visitor time. Like we're Somebody's around. Like oh, he's back. I'm back. The license plates give it away. Around Willie's. Uh oh, yeah. she lost her glasses. Who did? You did. No, they're on my head. <laughs> oh, they blend in. <laughs> um. Okay. Um, I think we should do the executive session and then we can, because I think we can do the GM report very quickly. Um, I would like to move that we go into executive session to discuss an employee matter. Is there a second? Second. It is 7.10 p.m. and we are going into executive session. It is 7.16 and we are out of executive session. No action was taken, which takes us to the general manager's report. Did anybody have any questions or things that they wanted to discuss? I have, I can be very quick because um, I think it's just a follow-up item, Mike. And that is um, in your report and mention of the, the financial performance for a April. Um, yeah. When I went to the page that's, that's a little bit new, the key indicators page after the um, printout of the email exchange you had with Beth. She, yeah. She, uh, if, if everybody can find that, I know it's kind of buried in there, but at the bottom of that page, what it shows in the cat, this first ever cash flow little block we have, it shows that our cash on hand went from 877,000 down to 633 with a, yep. a net, net change of a quarter of a million dollars. And, and so what the question there is, what did we spend the money on? Because the operating expenses for the month wouldn't have caused that kind of a difference. It should have been a cash positive month, not negative, just from normal operations. So it's either CapEx or, or, or something, you know, receipts, payments, accounts receivable yeah, yeah. didn't come in. Do you know, or is this something just to follow up on with Beth? I just made a note to get the breakdown on that number and provide it to you all tomorrow. Great. Cause that, and just to confirm, the only reason I'm raising is that that would be a heart attack, you know. If 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 we <laughs> yeah. if we ate up a quarter million dollars of our cash balance in one month, you're sort of going, oh my God, where did it go? Yes, understood. Yeah, well, because it's not in the it's not in the P and L. You know, the P and L is all sort of normal, normal, like your commentary. Right. Well, yeah. it is. It is in the purchase power. Not really, though. When you net it all out, you know the net income for the month was minus eight thousand, and then depreciation and amortization isn't a cash okay. expense. So you add that back. So we were, in pure operating terms, we were cash positive. Right. 
including so purchase get, power, but, you know, all the other things. He'll give yeah. us a book on it, not a problem. Yeah. Does anyone? Um... I have a question, Nat, for you. Were there any uh, follow-up questions from the select board meeting for me? Yeah, I was going to bring that up when we had new business. So, oh, I'm sorry. Usually, Ignore that. no. Uh, usually, when you give a when I've given presentations to the select board, there've been virtually no questions. This time, I did mention, as noted by uh, by Mike in the notes he had given me, that there were you know, that we're, we haven't well that that Green Mountain Power and others have are raising their rates. And that we haven't had a rate increase since 2009, but that things are getting a little tighter for obvious reasons, the price of energy, et cetera. And when they heard uh, that we hadn't for such a long time and others were, the question was, and it was a tricky one, uh, why? <laughs> no, why have you done so well? And, and I said that, uh, you know, you could talk to Mike, but it seemed clear to me that we had been very careful, very efficient, and that our size meant that we didn't have to hire at the top end a bunch of people to do various things that Mike does. Uh, and I didn't mention the, the titles at Washington Electric, et cetera. So basically I was saying we're efficient and Mike's been good. I, they, didn't, I, they didn't follow up on that. I, I think that's part of it. Uh, that's a big part of it. Um, the other part is, is the recovery that we made from the embezzlement. Well, I didn't want to mention that one. Uh, yeah, they, they but, 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 but nevertheless, it's, it's been a pot of cash that... Um, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sure they all knew that. I mean, I, I know they all know that. But that's in terms of the, in terms of the P&L, you know, it's, it's really Mike has done, Mike has been able to bring online these large industrial users. So, you know, having growth and demand, growth in our, you know, growth is everything. And, and yeah, one of the, and, one of the big contributors, Matt, too, yeah. is the, uh, the voltage, the system voltage conversion that we did yeah. that dropped our losses by almost 10%. You know, that's over 300,000 bucks a year that, that got chopped off the, uh, the equation. Yep. Well, yeah, I, I mentioned the the commercial industrial, but I didn't I didn't think of that one yeah. or the transmission line. Oh, yeah, there's lot there's lots of good reasons. Right. Yep. It's a good story. I, I, I had a really? question for you, Mike, on from Best Letter, the the Rex Rec purchase from uh, Vepsa, or, or are these pre contracted um, uh, Rec purchases or we have a lot of stuff that's pre-purchased, uh, but they also do a settlement each month based on which recs actually come in that month, Vince. So that's okay. like I've told you many times, oh, Rygate didn't come in this month, right. but it'll be there in June, or, or McG uh, McNeil didn't McNeil, come in this yeah. month, but it'll be there in August. Okay. Quite a bit of shuffling that goes on with it. It's it's going to continue. It says it'll continue to run though uh, over budget every month, rather than it being an intermittent based on when the settlement comes comes due. So I'm not sure what what she's talking about there. Oh, what, I'm, what I'm saying is it's a moving target. Okay, right. But she's saying it's going to continue to run ten thousand over budget every month. Well, can't. Well, maybe, I'll maybe, have to check maybe, on that. Yeah, maybe she can expand. I don't it. think it's an increase. It might be something she moved uh, to a different account, or but I'll find out. I got that circle too. Oh, I see. So it's probably get moved over. Right. Okay, so that it's over budget. It's not an additional ten thousand. It's just right. ten thousand exactly. Over. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had I had a, a couple of just wonder. 
I'm assuming we didn't have a contract for the for the vehicles from the Moyle Valley Ford. No, uh, I just issued a purchase order, which they accepted, and uh, that is a contract. You know, here we are, all these months later. They said, "Sorry, Charlie." Yeah, what, what do you think, Lynn? Is there any recourse on that? I don't know. I, I would ask I would ask Brooke about that one. Okay. But it, I mean, a purchase order that they've accepted is a contract, I would think. Um, but I don't know, you know, there may be special things that relate to cars and future orders. I, but, you know, it's, it sounded from your description like they're basically they're just selling them to people who are going to pay more. Right. That's correct. <laughs> uh, and, and uh, you know, that's that that doesn't strike me as being Bogus. particularly kosher. So I would I would ask Brooke about that. Um, I also wondered in well, looking I bought at, a truck today. I got to go pick it up in Laconia in the morning. Now I got to find another one. Um, on the fuel, what kind of fuel do we use? Diesel or regular gasoline? Diesel through the town. We contract with them for our diesel fuel for all the line trucks. And we also partner with them for on fuel oil for the office. Okay, but the with, $5 a gallon was for... Um, trucks. Was for, was for diesel, okay. That was a good deal, wow. That's, yeah, yeah, that's I thought good. it was. Well, it's about a dollar. We only use with... about a tank and a half of fuel oil to heat the building now that I got those mini splits, so that's not a problem. Um, do, we, do we have, have you, we've been sort of looking into, are, are there electric vehicles for some of, the, yes, of our electric needs? electric trucks, F-150. Well, I was hoping to have one of those F-150s that Lamoille Valley Ford has been ranting about. They haven't even fired up their charger system yet because the trucks aren't here. But we are in dire need of a spare truck as well. And I was going to try one of those out as a spare. They're, co they're coming, but the ones that are coming, because I had signed up and I'm going to um, cancel. I, I told them I don't want it because... Um, the ones that are coming are not the base model. It's, oh, it's the lariats, which are going to be like six figures. <laughs> you uh, look great. Very in close way. to it. Um, <laughs> is is the sense you should, like, you should it, talk yeah. to you should talk to them about it. Um, the other thing, um, I think, it, thinking about what's happening with fuel costs, which is going to affect purchase power costs, um, it would be good to have an update from VEPSA on forecasted um, purchase power costs for the next six months or to a year um, okay. for the next meeting. Um, because my fear is that we are gonna be going in for a rate increase in very short order because yeah. um, I think we're gonna continue to see um, I agree 100%. Um, and right that, now, the winter pricing for uh, December, January, February, this coming winter, has dropped only slightly from the record numbers we saw this past winter. So numbers are hanging right in there yeah. to be another whopper. Yeah, in terms of the purchase power cost, I mean, I understand why Billings Road generating less than we what we budgeted reduces what we pay them. But since what we pay them is less than the market price, we have to be buying that power from somebody else at a higher price, aren't we? So doesn't yep. it doesn't doesn't it actually increase our costs? It's not a cost decreaser; it's a net cost increaser, at least in the current market. I just thought it was curious in in um, you know the explanation page, the variance report. Sean always talks about the H11 as a cost increaser, so I'm going to circle that and get that clarified with him too. Well, I think ordinarily it would be a cost decreaser if they were doing what we budgeted for them or, or, or more than what we budgeted for. But if they're doing less, if, if what we pay them is less than the market price, and right now it is, um, then it would seem to me that it goes the other way. 
but that's what uh, that's basically what I had. I think I, so my question during the during when it's sunny outside, we're now actually cranking energy back into the transmission system through hardware. All the power is going backwards through the substation. Wow. Nice. If we just do that during a uh, monthly and annual peaks. <laughs> yeah, if we could do that. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, just re that reminds me that uh, at the meeting with the select board, they also asked me how we would go ahead with it. I'm sorry, uh, we lost you, Nat. We lost your sound. Okay, I, I'm louder now. Does that but Can you hear me now? Can hear you now. You said, and you were talking about the select board, but you cut off. So the at the select board there. meeting, they also asked me how we would uh, engineer or create a rate increase. I said, well, we okay. make the case to the Public Utilities Commission, and they say yes or no. And they said, that's, oh, okay. that's uh, that's that's uh, oversimplified, but yes. <laughs> they, they well, that's one it. part of it. We also have to have a local vote for it and get approval in a local vote. Uh, a local vote of the voters in Hardwick? Yep. Huh. Maybe you should um, tell yeah, I'll let him know. Tell Opie that. Yep. He may know it. He may not. Is there any other business? Is there a motion to adjourn? Wait. Motion so to adjourn. Yeah, yeah. Is that a second, Nat? Yeah, it's a second. Any objection? Wait a minute. Who moved? Uh, Vince. Vince moved. Vince moved. Vince moved. moved. Okay, thank you. Hearing none, we are adjourned at 7.31 p.m. Thank you all. And, and uh, Mike, I... I hit uh, local recording so i'm going to upload it and then i'll send you a link for download perfect thank you okay thanks thank you have a good one everybody take care bye, bye. bye.